So the second kingdom that we are going to discuss right now is Kingdom Protista. If you remember just now when we were discussing about monerans, we had one very important characteristics in them that is unicellular prokaryotes. And also before for half an hour I discussed you with you about the staircase hierarchy. So when we are moving from Monera to Protista, that means it is taken for consideration that there must be some development or else the hierarchy is nevertheless a waste. So from Monera to Protista, the first advancement seen is they are also unicellular, but they are eukaryotic. So they are unicellular first characteristics that you are going to have in case of protista that is they are unicellular eukaryotic break the term again unicellular means one cell they are one cell and eukaryotic means they are having true nucleus they are having membrane bound cell organelles and they are advanced as compared to that of the prokaryotes clear so in case of this protista, the major thing that you have to remember that they are characterized by having flagella or cilia or pseudopodia. Okay, we will discuss it. They are having flagella or they are having cilia or they are having pseudopodia. Okay. Be attentive. Flagella means they are whip-like. You understand whip used for beating? Whip-like, long whip-like. The next one is cilia. It is hair-like. Mind the term, whenever in biological sciences you are going to find this word like, you should immediately understand that it is not exactly hair, it is not exactly whip, but it is like a hair or like a whip. In coming portion of this chapter, you are going to get this type of like words too many times. So you have to be careful. And pseudopodia, break the term, pseudo means false. And podia means feet. So this is false feet and examples for these type of structures are the examples of protestants flagella is found in so in case of this Three examples you can also include as the example of kingdom protista that is they have flagella are found in euglena, cilia are found in paramecium and pseudopodia are found in amoeba. This euglena I should give a special mention to this because this euglena is said to be the bridge of plant and animal. This is an extra information I am providing you for your competitive examinations that Euglena is said to be the bridge of plant and animal kingdom and this Euglena was the sole organism which was responsible for a difference in that of the classification system based on whether they should be plant or whether they should be animal. Why so? Because Euglena is having chlorophyll. They can conduct photosynthesis and make their own food as well as they are heterotrophic and dependent upon others for their food. So they are showing two different types of modes of nutrition and that is why it is very difficult to make out whether it was a plant or an animal and later on it was fixed in the kingdom protista based on its characteristics. Because usually we consider green looking organisms are all plants. So euglena was green because of the presence of chlorophyll. So this you should remember for your further future references. So, the second point that will come under this case of protista is they have specialized organs for movement, okay? Specialized They are specialized organs for locomotion or locomotion is another term for movement and those specialized structures are cilia, flagella, and one more word, 
are having specialized organs for locomotion and feeding that is cilia, flagella and pseudopodia depending on the type of the protist we are concerned with. How come the beating of the hair like cilia or the beating of the whip like flagella helps in the movement of that organism from one place to another by pushing the water behind them because they are mostly found in water and how it helps in food the beating of that hair like structures only uplifts the food towards that of the mouth and ultimately it enters through the mouth third point under protista is they mainly are aquatic in nature they are mainly found in aqueous places like that of oceans, like that of sea, like that of rivers. So they are aquatic in nature that is they are mostly found where water is found. Fourth point is they are either autotrophic or heterotrophic. They are either autotrophic or they are heterotrophic depending upon the need as well as the organism okay so with this we conclude the four important characteristics for that of the kingdom protease that is first they are unicellular eukaryotic second is they have specialized organs for that of locomotion and feeding they are aquatic in nature they are autotrophic or heterotrophic depending upon the type of organism one extra point that you can add up with it is majority or most of the protists are disease causing in nature Most of the protists are disease causing in nature. Say for example plasmodium. Plasmodium is a protist that is responsible for causing malaria in human beings. You all know that it comes under one of the class of protists that is protozoans. We are not going into that detail. So with this we conclude the protist. Examples amoeba, paramecium, euglena already mentioned. I'm just making out one structure for your understanding. This is the outline of amoeba. Okay. So, this is the outline of amoeba. You have a nucleus, you have a cytoplasm on, upon which the nucleus is suspended. There is a vacuole or it is sometimes called contractile vacuole. There is food particle, there is pseudopodia engulfing that food particle. You can see it very well. So this is the structure of amoeba. The final point under protista that you have to remember is the type of reproduction the protistans undergo. As you have seen in case of that of the monerans, protista also undergoes two types of asexual reproduction, majorly budding and fission. So the sixth point is budding so is it clear the six characteristics again i am revising once again the first one was they are unicellular but eukaryotes second point where they are having quite a advanced methods of moving and feeding like cilia, flagella or pseudopodia. The third one we have learnt is they are majorly aquatic. Fourth one we have learnt is they are autotrophic as well as heterotrophic. Fifth point that we have learnt is they are not all but some members are disease causing or majority are disease causing. And the last one we have learnt is they are having two types of asexual reproduction majorly budding and fission. Uh, the last point was they undergo reproduction by two methods one is budding and another one is fission with this we complete the second kingdom